folks, your boy Steve here, and I got Matt in the Lexus, Hello. plugging away, working on some things. So we got kind of a short night plan tonight. We just we want to tidy up some little things that we have kind of, some little things that we've kind of identified that we need, that need attention. And I got a little list made here. Um, I'm leaving town this weekend, so we don't really have a full night to work on this like usual, but we are gonna try to get some things done. We got the new shifter gate in for our uh, b and shifter so that the reverse shift will ratchet and lock properly. So we got that going on. Uh, I made just a quick makeshift bracket for our AFR gauge because we have had to just dangle in from the mirror. Um, so we're hoping to get those two things squared away. Um, and then I bought this today, which is a knock module out of a 1985 Corvette and also the connector. And this is exactly the same setup we have in the Z with the mega squirt. Uh, you cannot just have a knock sensor going straight to the mega squirt. It will not work. You have to have that box, which basically converts the knock sensor tiny little voltage into a full 12 volt um, system that the ECM can recognize and then take action for knock detection. So I'm going to attempt to do that using the stock knock sensors that are already in the 2J engine. Knock sensors are basically all the same in the way they work. They're a piezoelectric element that creates a voltage whenever it's shocked or whenever it feels something knock or shake up, shake up the sensor, if you will. Um, so I'm hoping to get that wired in and working today. We also have a little transmission leak that we're hoping is just the transmission pan gasket. So we're gonna go ahead and retorque the pan bolts. Um, also, the engine's been breaking up at about 5,500 RPMs. And I mean, it's more than just breaking up. It will not go past 5,500 RPMs. So um, it may be, so the manual states that it may be necessary to put a 10,000 ohm shunt resistor in the crank signal circuit. You guys have seen me put a bunch of resistors in this circuit before, but when we figured out the cam sensor was the issue, we ended up taking all the shunt resistors out. So we are once again putting in a shunt resistor, 10,000 ohms. I already tried a thousand ohm and it didn't work at all. Um, and then we'd like to put a heavier spring in the wastegate since the car's only making like three pounds of boost right now. Um, and also the exhaust rattle that has just kind of been annoying the crap out of everybody. And what it is is the downpipe runs just right parallel with the um, wastegate dump and they just barely touch each other and that's what the rattle noise is coming from. And then finally, there's a little dilly that needs to go on the shifter handle there. So hoping to get all of it done tonight. I already got the 10,000 ohm resistor in the car. I'm gonna see if that worked real quick. And uh, then I'll start wiring up the knock sensor module. Matthew is currently pulling out the shifter. Did you get it out already? Yeah. Oh, cool. So he was able to just take the mounting bolts out from our rivnet holes. And this is the piece we're swapping out right here. It's just got like a couple of E-clips on the side. That comes off, new one goes on. Oh, happy day. So we're making good time. We're going, oh, to, get some, we're going to get some stuff done pretty quick tonight, baby. Got the new uh, shift gate into the new shifter, so um, since this is a reverse pattern shift on this thing, one, two, three is down instead of one, two, three up. We had to install a gate that'll allow us to slap shift correctly because before, if you're going back, you can actually just slide into all the gears so we can slide first through third all the way. But with a new gate, it'll lock in second and then full pull on the stick will be a third. Seems like it works just like it did when it was, had the old gate and then going forward. The park. Reverse, neutral, there's first, right there. Wait, right, hold on. Second. You just pull it to second okay. and then trigger to third. Yeah. Go back, slide all the way forward into neutral. That's all the way forward, right? Okay, hold on, that's good. So it should, okay, so it will skip. Okay, so it will skip first if you're coming out of neutral. Out of neutral, yeah. All right, so you have to make sure you. Well, that shouldn't so, be a problem. So that's neutral, so just one click. So this first, take off, bye! Yank it back for a second and then pull the trigger for third. Okay, cool. So no worries about skip shifting. Nice. No doubt. So I got the 10,000 ohm resistor in on the crank signal and we are still popping and breaking up at 5,500 RPMs. But this turbo, this engine's not even gonna wake up until 5,500 RPMs. We already know that. It just starts to spool up right yeah, when it, about right the time it starts. starts to so a quick overview on how we're going to set up our knock module. Uh, what we're going to be using is the knock module or spark control module out of a 1985 Corvette. 
You can get these new from any local parts store for about 60 to 80 bucks. You can also get the connector also from the parts store for, uh, I think it's about 35 to 40 bucks. So the part number I'm gonna be using is gonna be this one right here. And um, it's just a five pin module. We're only gonna use four pins. The connector pigtail will come with four pins already wired out. And basically all the module needs is an ignition 12 volt source, a ground, and then we'll run a circuit from our Knox insert to the module and another circuit from the module to the mega squirt on the spare ADC terminal. The way the module works is it has 12 volts going to the mega squirt at all times. And whenever it detects voltage from the knock sensor, that 12 volt signal will, sh will drop out. And that's how the micro squirt will know we have knock and it needs to take action on retarding timing or taking whatever measures you set up to inhibit any further knock. The knock sensor for a 1985 Corvette, coincidentally, threads right into the block on an L28 for the 280ZX guys. So you can use that 85 knock sensor, GM knock sensor that are pretty cheap and thread it right into the block. In this case, we will be using the 2JZ knock sensor and we're going to see if it can provide enough voltage to work with this module so that we can just retain the stock knock sensors. Here, I'm about halfway done wiring up the knock module and uh, really the list is getting pretty short pretty quick. Let's Tighten go the bolt pans. see where we're at. Oh, the pan bolts. Hold, hold my paper there. There you go. Okay. And this is done, although it didn't work. It didn't work. Um, this is halfway done. We got to do that. AFM gauge. I figured we would just use double sided tape on that, but I mean, we don't have to do that tonight or whatever. Just, I might want to find a better way to hook it up permanently. You know what I mean? Like how? Like screws? Maybe. The dash. Maybe. I'd like to find a good place in the dash for us to put it. It's not going to be obstructed, but that we can maybe run the lines like through the dash. Yeah. And it's just it. the wiring is on the floorboard of the driver's side and the passenger side. That's really. It wasn't that I'm like hell bent on getting the gauge mounted tonight. Yeah. It's just that we're stepping all over these wires. Yeah, right? for sure. So maybe we can work on that. But um, so the shift handle thing is just this little pink guy right here. That goes on that little. So all you got to do is put that through the hole and then the, yeah. through the screw down and we get that done. And uh, once I get this knock sensor done, then we don't have anything else to do tonight. We'll figure it out. We'll try to get as much done as we can within reason. That's up there in the car. I'm gonna go under the car and tap on the engine block or right by the sensor with my little hammer. And he's gonna monitor now. Let's see if it's working. Yep, yeah, there it goes. Hell yeah. We got the gate apart, knock sensors working, shifters working. Oh, and the tranny leak did turn out to be, well, we, we have on pretty good authority. It turned out to just be the pan bolts. Just need a little snugging down. It's got an old cork gasket up there that then just need a little retorque now and then. But well, now we got the heavier spring going in the gate. Still not going both springs quite yet. We'd like not to see yet. what it does not on. Quite yet. If we can run about six, seven pounds while we do some more street tuning and get that. For sure. Um, I really want to get that rev limiter thing worked yeah, out. Yeah, I was gonna say we need to solve the breakup first and foremost. But at least once we have it solved, we'll already have the heavier spring in the waste case. Yeah, so we can just and get everything drive, should be running know? good. While I do this, Matt, take a look at these pipes and see if you can think of any just quick temporary way to make them stop rattling on each other. I wonder if. Uh, I really think wrap is the best option. Oh, uh, you know what? We could just loosen the clamp on... Here, put some light up there. So if you look at the base of the wastegate, it's just got a V-band. We could just loosen that and rotate the whole wastegate just clockwise a little bit, and it'll put this pipe further over this way. Yeah, but so look, they'll touching up top. No, that's not going to solve that issue. Well, then you could go the other way. It's still going to touch up top. No, Either it's way. not. The whole wastegate will be rotating. The whole waste. Okay, okay, See what okay, I mean? okay, yeah, I got And all you. it is is a little okay. Allen on okay, that clamp. I thought you just meant spinning the pipe. Okay, no, yeah. I got you. Nice. Cool, let's try that. That should work famously. Then we don't got to do anything goofy. So I'm going to work on compressing this bastard back in there. It's kind of a pain. It's going to be real hard when there's two springs, or three, or four. Or 17. Who knows? I'm going to give you some light there, brother. Thanks, brother. The V bands are so nice for this reason like infinite adjustability infinite possibility and it's still going to be nice and parallel shotgun style exhaust i think you should try to rotate it clockwise rather than counter just to kind of put some space between the 
dump well, right now. We're just trying to get an Allen key into this thing. Yeah, it can be hard. Is it a metric Allen or yeah, standard. standard Allen? This is standard. Or Wuhan Allen. Like our wastegate. Just drop the Allen key all over the ground 17 times. Nothing That's seems what it to is. fit the Wuhan Allen. We don't have that tool. Snap-on doesn't sell it either. We'll pretty much have to buy it on eBay. But Cornwell or Mac makes one. <laughs> and they just rebranded, yeah. no doubt. Well, we got the bigger spring in the yeah. gate yeah. now. Matt's fighting that damn V-band. And uh, we're going to take it for one last spin. In order to get some good data for the 5,500 RPM breakup issue, we are going to once again be taking trigger logs. And uh, the only best way to do that is to drive it. Also, we get to kind of monitor our knock now because we have a working knock sensor, which I need to kind of secure into place over here amongst all this wiring. Uh, dude, that's so annoying. <laughs> you can do it. There's just not a good way to look at it. Never give up, never, never surrender. surrender. Matt keeps his composure so much better when I have my camera filming. It's not even true. Much less profanity. Almost zero tools thrown. I say we wait on the AFR gauge until we can get figure out a way to mount it permanently that looks nice, so we don't have to change it later on. Okay, we can wait on that. No big deal. That's a knock sensor install. We're done with that. Boom, and it worked. Torque converter band. Or, wow. <clears throat> Transmission wrote... pan bolt. Uh... Waiting on that. Installed that. Installed that. All that. Boom! Everything except one thing, baby. Uh, then I think we'll be done for the night. You want to slap the bumper on before we roll out? Nah, fuck it. Really? Yeah. Well, we have it. No, but it's so rattly, dude. That's why we left it off last time. That whole side doesn't connect. Yeah, but then the push pins kept it pretty solid. I don't want it to damage it even more. Oh, All right, fine. We'll sleep it off. Now. All right, you wait here. We'll be back. Oh, no more rattle. Nice. Yeah. much better this way the shifting is so much more easier to manage this way 
I don't have to keep reminding myself which way to go. It's like, it, it'll only really let you go one way. So that's good. The breakup's still happening, violent as ever. We didn't measure any knocks, so we could probably throw a shitload more timing at it, which might help us spool a little sooner. But this turbo doesn't even start to spool until 5,000. It's a huge turbo, and it's also just terribly inefficient and cheap. Can't wait till we can put this bitch up on two step. It's too grumpy. My ears are ringing. What? <laughs> All right, so we should have a good trigger log to send into the forum. See if somebody can help us figure out why our damn 2J can't even get into its power band. Ooh boy, this has been a did some speedy work tonight. Man, we've been here for two solid hours, and honestly, I'd be probably been more productive than ever before. What do we do tonight? Oh wow, let's get the list. <clears throat> so, IS to-do list, shifter gate installed, boom, mm -hmm. 10,000 ohm resistor installed, boom, didn't do shit, KS module installed, that stands for knock sensor, by the way, guys, uh, torque the pan bolts on the transmission, to care the transmission leak, uh, install the 10-pound spring, uh, fix the exhaust Made rattle, more booze. install the shift lock handle, the only thing off the whole list we didn't get done... Is that is little guy right there. Installing the AF gauge, and honestly, I immediately had regret whenever we went on our test drive and had no idea what our air fuel ratio was. But I will say that we're gonna find a better solution for it that's gonna look nice whenever we got it at the track and everything instead of just stuck to the dashboard. I think well, we it's gonna look okay. I think we can do better. I mean, I welded the bracket, and I didn't even put it on this video because it went so bad. But y'all see. It's going to be held still instead of hanging on the mirror, and that's a slight that's a plus, improvement, yeah. at least. That's a plus either way. At least. So, uh, that's going to do it for this week. Uh, Got to figure out this breakup issue. This car does not even start to make boost till about 5,000 RPMs. And unfortunately, that's right when it starts to break up. it's breaking up at like 5,500. <laughs> so, as soon as the smiles start, yeah, it's, the terror sets in. It gets in. really angry and really loud. <laughs> it gets very <laughs> violent at that time. So, we're going to figure that out. Hopefully, we'll have a resolution next week, but you'll be there to find out. We'll see you then.